Hi there, friend. Welcome to day four of Belong and Rest and Immersion in Your God-Given Identity. Yay, you made it. Day four, you made it through all four days of the challenge. And I want to thank you and congratulate you and celebrate you for showing up and doing the hard work. Sometimes this is not easy to let God into the spaces where we have protected or we've built walls around and you've let your guard down and let God into those and taken a step, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's your second step. Maybe it's your thousandth step, um, of learning to receive God's love. And that's worth celebrating. So thank you. You made it through all four days and took the space to listen to these lessons and apply them to your life. I'm going to start by reading some of Psalm 139. It is an incredible passage that reminds us of how seen we really are by God and how much he does know us and accept us. Verse one, uh, God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit? To be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you'd find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. Then I said to myself, oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. It's a fact. Darkness isn't dark to you. Night and day, darkness and light, they're all the same to you. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something like an open book. You watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them. I couldn't even begin to count them any more than I could count the sand of the sea. Oh, let me rise in the morning and live always with you. And that is through verse um, 19. So that really brings it right into what I want to talk about today uh, when he's talking about, uh, let me always live with you. Because the next question I think that naturally follows talking about our God-given identity is then how do we live this out? How do we actually practice this in our everyday lives? And it can take us back to looking at what is another synonym maybe for the word identity. And that is, what do we live in? What do we dwell in? What do we abide in? And actually making our home there. So we go from trying to walk it out first to just trying to abide in it and live in it, um, receiving and accepting and belonging and resting in what has already been given us and what has been spoken over us. John 15 is the passage that we find, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So we also, I read a verse, this makes me think of the verse I read in Proverbs 18 yesterday about running to God as the safe tower. When we start to stray or wander and find ourselves um, comparing 
ourselves to what somebody else is doing, we that's a good indicator that we are finding our identity in what we're doing because we start to compare and measure ourselves according to what God has somebody else on mission doing. Or if you're starting to feel insecure uh, with someone else's comments made about you and you feel like it's saying something about your acceptance or your worth, those can point us to coming back to Christ and abiding in it. If it's our home, we don't have to feel guilty about coming back to it. We might wander off of our home base and then we come back to it. We're reminded to come back to the truth, the real solid truth of who we are. And it is not our accomplishments. We are a child of God fully loved by God and that informs everything else around us. So in order to really make your home and dwell in your identity that is God given, you already belong. We're learning to rest in this. Believe that you belong there. You are accepted and worthy and enough to be loved and brought into that family. You belong there. Don't believe any of the lies of the enemy saying, oh, you're not, you're not good enough to be here. No, you belong there. You've been adopted. Your entrance into that family, into that relationship has already been paid for. The second thing I want you to remind yourself of is the gospel. It is not up to you. It is not you that got you there and God is holding you. It's not up to you to hold on so tightly that you don't um, fall out of this family. Um, You have been brought into this family. Remind yourself of the gospel that it is in our weakness that we are accepted and we are loved fully in that place. Um, Not after we reform or are better, um, can we earn or prove that we belong there? Um, because it's been given to you. And then as, um, thoughts come up that make you feel challenged or uncomfortable or defensive, those things we talked about in day three, as those come up, just stay curious about them. This is crucial that we just stay curious. Don't get judgmental towards yourself like, ah, I cannot believe I'm in this place again. Instead, ask questions like, what happened that resulted in me feeling this way? Out of a place of curiosity. Of course, do it inviting God into that space as well, but just remaining non-judgmental of ourselves, accepting whatever is going to come up and not being afraid of it, um, is a huge path to freedom in this area to where you can really walk in the freedom that God has given to you because you don't have to be bondage to the fear or the guilt or the shame or the performance that comes from other lesser identities. So continue to let God into those places. And if being raw and open with God feels risky, or maybe it feels really full of like trepidation, like you're not really sure if you can say, God, search me and know me and try my thoughts breakthroughs in this area is why I coach and mentor people. I want you to be able to draw so close to God that does not, that is not possible unless we are willing to let God draw close to us in those really vulnerable places. And if you are listening to me and you're like your heart races, as I talk about the potential and the abundance that is available in relationship with God and you feel like 
You want that. You There's something in the pit of your stomach saying, I need that. That's for me. Please reach out to me. I would love to pray with you. If this is a good next step for you on your spiritual journey, I would absolutely love to and be so honored to walk with you into a deeper understanding and knowing of God because breakthroughs like this and freedom are 100% possible. God, I know it's a cliche and it's a song, but God does break chains. He's a chain breaker and he's a way maker into more abundant life that is full of everything that God has for you. And I guarantee none of it is achieving or performance or fear or guilt or shame. Those are from the devil. And as the other song says, um, fear can go to hell and shame can go there too. That's where they came from and they can go back where they came from and we can walk in newness of life because we have been made a new creation. We can dwell in the home that God has invited us into, that he has made for us into the family that he is inviting us into, into his heart as we know him more and allow ourselves to be known and know ourselves the way that he does. Thank you so much for joining me for this. It has been a very sweet week to press into the heart of God towards us as his children.